Well, I've got my work cut out now. Okay, I have been at this forever. The trouble is, is that in the heat treat, it warped and it's bent over this way, which means that still I haven't hit the middle of the underside, which is a really, really big problem. In addition to that, I very stupidly had this belt laid over the granite plate. And of course, as it comes over the edge there, it just bows up a little bit. And in hitting that, I now no longer have a nice flatness up to the edge. Needless to say, I've got a lot of material to remove and doing it by hand is gonna take too long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and remove a little more bulk on the grinder and then come back here and work my way up the grit slowly. So it's back into the grinding room for a little more grinding before we go back to the hand sanding. Hopefully we can move this thing along. Okay, so right now I have spent like four plus hours hand sanding, maybe more. Yeah, probably about four hours or so hand sanding. And we're at 180 grit. These are all the pieces of 180 grit sandpaper I used. I was wetting my granite surface plate, and that kind of helped create a little bit of a little bit of a, a, a good bit of suction held the thing down there, and I flattened off the back side of the plane. This is extremely important. Though I've never made a plane before, I'm quite certain that it needs an extremely flat back so that it can have an edge and be sharp and, and be able to be sharpened in the future. And of course, I flattened the front of it, and I've been working on the bevel. Everything's at 180 grit. I experimented a little bit using this diamond plate here, trying to see if there'd be any difference in stock removal, but I found the best results was using the 180 grit sandpaper here on the granite block and just really, really taking my time. It, has been tiring work. Every time I slipped, started just wearing away at the calluses in my hands, which is which is pretty funny. But anyway, it is time to take our plane blade up the grits. Oh yes, we've got a long way to go, but now that we've established the flats, I'm quite certain it's gonna be a lot easier. We're going up grits. I don't know where to, but wherever we're going, it's a higher grit. <laughs> so, I'm sure I used to do this as a kid. So, damn it, I was really hoping this transition would work. So, <laughs> we're trying to do a transition, pull the string out. So, after lots of hand sanding, we have it sanded to a 400 grit, and it has taken a lot of time to get that thing flat. It's pretty interesting when doing a blade, you know, I, I guess there are people that are extraordinarily talented and they make their blades perfectly flat, but I think it helps with the fact that you're using like a stick. You know, you see me use a hammer handle or a small piece of steel to sand the blade, which means that all the undulations along it, it's like, a, it's like an inch and a half wide. It follows them. And so you're not making it perfectly flat. You're following the undulations and lack of flatness in the blade. However, here, because we're using the granite plate, there's, and it's very hard, there's no give. There's just zero tolerance. But on the backside, we've got it pretty damn close to being 100% perfect. I am. I'm, I'm very pleased with the tolerance we got it. On the front side here, I had a lot more difficulty getting it perfect. So just towards the end there, as I was at 243, 20, and 400, I put a piece of cardboard beneath it, and that gave me enough give to get it nicely, uh, nicely, nice, nice finish over the whole thing. I'm not too worried about that. The edge, just perfect. Again, really nice and flat working that. So now that we've spent all this time making an edge, that itself is actually very, very sharp and is gonna be very close to being stoned. Before we go into the etch, I wanna make sure that we can protect the edge. You've seen me do this with nail polish before. Well, I'm gonna try it with wax and we're gonna see how that holds up to the acid to protect the edge for the edge. Time to set fire to some wax. I don't wanna get it too hot because I don't want it to uh, self-ignite and 
be really difficult to put out. I'm just taking my time with the torch, and then once all the little bits of wax are melted, we should be able to put the tip of the blade in there. And so just like this, hopefully we will get a good coating on it. Damn it, I went too far up the blade. Okay, take two. Put it in nice and gently. Try and get a nice even uh, covering right up to the bevel. Perfect. And it's terrible on the backside. Should've just used nail polish. <laughs> I should've just used nail polish. We'll just use nail polish. Scrap this plan. Terrible. Lots of people asked where the uh, Kiridashi that I made completely by hand out of Damascus made the Damascus by hand too. Wonder where that was. It's right here and I'm using it. Here's the other Kiridashi. This still exists. So we're gonna use the nail polish instead. I'm gonna start it on the edge where I want it nice and thick. That's the priority to keep it all uh, all acid free. And hopefully we'll build up a nice, uh, nice good coating that's nicely bonded to it so the acid will not touch the metal. Why would they design that to not at all go down to the bottom? That is just so Annoying. Look at that, you miss out on a half inch of nail polish. Hey, what nail polish industry these days, not what it used to be. Ogly dokly, it is now time for the etch. Here's my ferric chloride. Here is the piece we have the, <laughs> we have the nail polish on it. It's time to put it in. And I'm gonna let that stay in there and sit in there for probably about 20 minutes only. Ugly dogly, so 20 minutes has passed. I don't wanna do any more etching. I'm nervous that that could, uh, that could really, really damage all the flatness that we've worked hard to keep. I'm gonna give that a little bit of a rinse in the water, get the bulk of the ferric chloride off. And we're trying something new here. We're gonna be putting this in caustic soda because I believe that has a blackening effects to steel. And we're gonna leave that there for just a little bit before we come back to polish it up. Ugly dogly, so lots of time has passed. And we're gonna pull it out, and it does indeed look very black. Isn't that interesting? And uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use some bihydrogen oxide to just uh, clean that all off. So now that that is out of there, I'm actually very pleased with how black it got. We need to polish it. And of course, after polishing comes re-establishing a flat on the back side here, on the back side of the edge. Obviously, this is a single bevel. Re-establishing a flat here, and then finishing the bevel. And we're gonna be doing that with some Japanese stones. So that's in a... I mean, it's... It doesn't need to be in there, but it is. I've changed the water over, just because when I was doing the initial stuff, obviously we were making 180 grit sized flakes of metal, and I was using this water to help wet it all down. And if I was to go in and out of this water now, I'd probably still have those 180 grit pieces of, uh, of metal in there, scratching it as we polish it with, of course, our 2000 grit sandpaper. And hopefully, even though we only left it in there for 20 minutes, we're gonna polish up the highs, which is the 2% nickel steel, and we're not gonna touch the lows, which is the 0.8% carbon steel, nothing else in there, which is going to bring up the pattern. I think it's going to be rather fantastic. Peel the nail polish off, looks like it did a marvelous job, didn't work right there. There we go, it all came off in one piece. Oh yes. Now very gently, we're going to polish it and look at that pattern peek through there. That caustic soda has really worked wonders on that. That's made incredible contrast. That is super, super interesting. So I'm just gonna work the dark spots where it hasn't come out quite as well so that we get an even level of shine the whole way across. Just light pressure, buffing the whole thing up. Now we'll come onto the back side. You can see where our nail polish has neatly divided the etched piece from the unetched piece. You can see, however, the acid got through right there, which is gonna be a worry if that edge ever gets brought back a quarter inch. I doubt it ever will in its lifetime, but it means that it would just then have to be brought back even further. My goodness, this is beautiful. The contrast is out of this world. It really seems like the caustic soda there in the boiling water left it for an hour or so, something like that. The contrast is out of this world. On none of my pieces, I don't think I've ever had that degree of contrast with only that little etch too. We're now gonna come onto the sides. Now the sides didn't get quite the same polish because I wanted to keep the tolerance. Ooh, little voice crack there. 
tolerance. Since we obviously did the sides on the mill, but still, they come up, they look rather beautiful. Take that 2000 grit, go on the sides there, buff up the high spots. Oh, you gotta see that, come get a shot of this. Look at how beautiful the pattern looks right there on the end. Wow. Okay, it is now ready for us to move back, or I should say, us to move to the stones and start sharpening this. This is a 1000 grit stone. We're gonna work our way up from here. Make sure we get this edge as nice as possible so that when Dustin, obviously, by the way guys, if you're not subscribed to Dustin, go ahead and do it. His channel is awesome. He makes some awesome builds. He is going to be making a plane with this Damascus steel blade. So go subscribe to it. There is a link in the description below. But we want to make sure that it's as sharp as possible for when he gets it. I'm going to focus on just this top third of the backside. Here we go. So we're still here on the thousand grit stone. I've taken my time on the back side there, got it worked down nicely, switching from side to side of the stone itself so that we can help keep the stone flat and make sure that uh, we're keeping our bevel flat too because we're now working on the bevel, which is rather terrifying. And you'll see I'm going at an angle like this. Now, I don't know anything about sharpening these things. All I know is the angle that Dustin wants. He wants a 30 degree angle. So we made this a 30 degree angle. But in terms of the technique to do it by hand, I am eyeballing it and I'm just pivoting this up until I see the edge touch onto the stone and feel it. And I've been doing a mixture of going back and forwards at an angle like this, doing the same thing over here, and doing figure of eights. The worry I have with all of this is that I'm rolling the edge and I'm not keeping the edge flat because we want a nice flat edge, as flat as possible, and that's where the technique is so important. And of course, you know, you look at people like the samurai carpenter, Jesse. I made a chisel for him, a Damascus chisel, and holy moly does he get stuff sharp. I believe he went and took that chisel and made it 30,000 grit after I sent it to him, which is just astonishing. But people like him and all the other talented craftsmen around the world that sharpen their plane blades and their chisel blades all the time, they get an incredible talent at it and are able to keep things perfectly flat even while balancing the flatness on three-eighths of an inch where like one wrong move you can ruin a lot a lot of work a lot a lot of work could be ruined with one wrong move here on the stone good fun though it's quite peaceful work I'm enjoying it Gentlemen, it has been an absolute pleasure having you here in the workshop for another day where we have worked on the hand plane blades for the hand blade blades, the hand plane blades for Dustin Penner. Of course, this is the Dustin Penner collaboration. As I've been saying, guys, go subscribe to his channel. He makes awesome videos, lots of fun. He is soon going to be making a wooden hand plane with this. It's going to be one of a kind. It's going to be very special. Make sure you subscribe to him to check it out. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, it is soon Christmas time. Make sure you get your merch merchandise at alexsteelshop.com. All the fun stuff is back on the website. There's even beach towels and mugs on the website, which is just fantastic. In addition to the fantastic t-shirt. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Can't wait to see you tomorrow on the next episode. Hit hint, we're gonna hit 500,000 subscribers tomorrow.